Hello again. This is part three of our Computer Science and Mathematics 447 discussion of the binomial coefficients. Now in the first two videos, you'll remember that we talked about Pascal's triangle, its connection to the binomial coefficients. In the uh, second video, we talked about the binomial theorem, the multinomial theorem, and Newton's binomial theorem, three famous major theorems that involve the binomial coefficients and give them their name. And in this third video, we're going to be looking at identities that the binomial coefficients satisfy and how you might go about proving them in a non-algebraic way. Let's take a look at, uh, at a problem. Here's an, what I mean by an identity. This is a statement involving binomial coefficients where one side is just equal to the right-hand side no matter what n, m, and k are as long as they're, they're chosen appropriately. So for instance, if I were to take n to be 5, m to be 3, and k to be 2. This is saying that 5 choose 3 times 3 choose 2 should be the same as 5 choose 2 times 5 minus 2 choose 3 minus 2. So if we were to take a look at this, 5 choose 3 is uh, 10, 3 choose 2 is 3, so we have 30 on the left hand side. Now on the right hand side, I'll have five choose two is also 10, and five minus two is three, three minus two is one, three choose one is three again, so we have 30 on the right hand side as well. So this is a, a curious statement saying that this product will always be equal to this product. We'd like to prove, we'd like to know why this is true. Now if you uh, just take what we've seen before. You can definitely try an algebraic proof. We have a formula for n choose m. We have n factorial over m factorial n minus m factorial. We have similar formulas for m choose k. We have, and, and for each of these binomial coefficients on the right, I would encourage you to go through and uh, try writing out the formulas for each of these. Try to simplify and see if the left hand side actually does equal the right hand side. Hopefully, without too much trouble, you'll see that it does. Yeah, go ahead and do that now. All right, now let's go back to the problem. Let's, uh, let's take a look at how you might prove this in a non-algebraic way. Without coming up with a formula using factorials for each of these, can I still explain why these are true? Why the left-hand side should equal the right-hand side? I can, and we're gonna use a technique called combinatorial proof. Now, combinatorial proof is kind of a vague concept. There are multiple things that could be considered combinatorial proof. But in our class, we're going to think of it in one or two particular ways. We'll be proving the truth of an equation. We will find a single set that both sides count, or possibly two different sets, each counted by one of the equation sides, but those two sets will have the same size. There will be a bijection between the two sets. Now we're gonna try and illustrate uh, this first principle with this example. What set might the left-hand side count that the right-hand side would also count? Well, let's imagine that we had a class of n people. We were going to choose m of them to form a committee, and we were going to designate k people on the committee as co-chairs of the committee. Now, if you're going to choose committees and co-chairs uh, from the class of, of size n, one way you could do it is step one, choose the m people that will be on the committee. Well, the number of ways to choose m people from a class of size n is n choose m. You might then, from those m people, choose k people to be your chairs, and there are m choose k ways of doing that. So here's the number of ways to do step one, here's the number of ways of to do step two, and we just multiply them together. Now, is there another way to count the number of ways to choose committees and co-chairs? Well, there is. Maybe instead of choosing the committees first and then appointing the co-chairs, what if I were to start, to start with my class of n people and choose the k people who will be the co-chairs first of all? Well then there would be n choose k ways of doing this. Now if I have already indicated which k people are going to be the chairs of the committees, but I still need to form the committee itself, there were supposed to be m people on the committee. I've already chosen k people to be the chairs, so they definitely are on the committee and there are m minus k spots to fill on the committee. 
and I'm going to choose from the n people who are not already chosen. So n minus k people remain to be chosen for m minus k remaining spots. This is the number of ways to complete the committees if you've already chosen the co-chairs. So both sides count the same thing. We're counting committees and co-chairs. We're doing it in slightly different ways, and that's why we get different formulas for the two sides. But because the two sides do count the same thing, they have to be equal to each other. And what we've done just now is given you an explanation for why the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. We've done it by finding something to count. All right, now as you take a look at, uh, at this population, or sorry, at this uh, problem, You'll find this is a, uh, perhaps a, a clever way of thinking about this. Uh, maybe you, you come upon it, thinking about it after a few minutes, hopefully so. Um, but this is the hard part about combinatorial proofs. What you'll find is that there are many, many, many uh, proofs that are possible. There are many patterns that you'll find in the binomial coefficients. Whenever you find a pattern, you want to have a proof of it. And some of these uh, have very nice, simple algebraic proofs. Some of them have very nasty algebraic proofs. For instance, this one had a not too bad algebraic proof. This one though, would have a nasty algebraic proof if you were to write it out. Proving it directly would be very complicated. You could perhaps prove it by induction, but uh, it's a lot simpler to think about it combinatorially. We've discussed this one in class, the second to last one. We've said that the left-hand side counts the number of subsets possible from a set of size n breaking it up on how large the subset is. So n choose 0 is the number of subsets that are empty, n choose 1 is the number of subsets that have just one thing in them, and so on, all the way up through n choose n. This is the number of subsets that include everything. Now if I add that up, that's supposed to give me the total number of subsets. Now if you uh, take a look in a, a, a book on, on mathematical proof or, or set theory, or if you just Google this on the internet, you'll find that the number of subsets of a, subs of a set with size n is 2 to the n, and you can see why that is. But because both sides count the same thing, the number of subsets, that means that both sides have to be equal to each other. Now as you take a look at these identities, you'll see that many of them are, are known to us. Uh, we've seen these first two the, uh, the one below that is just the hockey stick identity we saw in the, in the first video. Um, these two are called the committee chair identities. And then these are what happens when you add together the binomial coefficients on a row, or maybe you alternately add and subtract. For each of these, it would be interesting to go ahead and, and see if you can prove them algebraically, and then to see if you can find a set that both sides count. Um, that would be a, an equally valid way of proving it and perhaps a, a bit more fun. Well, this concludes our discussion of the binomial coefficients. We've talked about the triangle, we've talked about the theorems, we've talked about uh, proving techniques, and uh, we've seen some interesting identities that will give you practice in proving things combinatorially. See you later.